In this video, I'm going to share some of my strategies for how to memorize the nucleobases in DNA. First, you need to remember a few rules and mnemonics. The first one is pure as gold. The purines are A and G. Next is cut of pi. C, U, and T are the pyrimidines. Between these two mnemonics, the second one can help you remember the general shape of each class of nucleobase. Since a pi is roughly round in shape, the pyrimidines are also roughly round compared to the purines, which have two fused rings. Next, it's important to remember that U is not a base in DNA. U is a pyrimidine that is found in RNA. Since this video is focusing on DNA base structure, I'm not going to be saying much about U after this. Now, of the four DNA bases, Following this order of pure as gold cut of pi, A, G, C, T, the number of double bonds you find in the ring follow this pattern, 4, 3, 2, 1. Committing this fact to memory will help you double check your structures, and if you're ever unsure, will help you rationalize a structure. When assigning double bonds in the ring, the rule is quite simple. Every time you have a choice, you're usually dealing with a nitrogen that either forms a double bond or doesn't. In the nucleobases, nitrogen is never positively charged, thus it can only have three things attached. In cases where hydrogen is attached, there are no double bonds, and when hydrogen is not attached, you have a single double bond to nitrogen. And finally, before we get started, you'll have to remember that A forms two hydrogen bonds to T, and C forms three hydrogen bonds to G. My system involves writing the pure as gold, AG, purines, in a row, and the pyrimidines, CT, in another row. And as you're getting started, you might want to write the four, three, two, one numbers next to these to remind you how many double bonds are found in each base. To begin with, each base has a six-membered ring, with two nitrogens in these positions, and a CC double bond on the right. Now remembering cut of pi, the pyrimidines are more pi-shaped, more rounded, and the purines have something extra, and that extra is a five-membered ring with two nitrogens in the same positions and a double bond in the same positions. Next, an important common property to fill in is the connection to the deoxyribose sugar. In all cases, it is the rightmost lower nitrogen. Now for my strategy of memorizing these, I start with thymine. Since you only have one double bond in the thymine ring, these remaining carbons have to have double bonds to them because the nucleobases are generally flat and the groups coming off of this side of the ring have to be planar because they're generally involved in some sort of hydrogen bonding interactions. So I put these two carbonyls in. Now, a special thing that I memorize about thymine is that thymine shares its lower left carbonyl in the lower row with cytosine, and thymine shares its upper right carbonyl in the right column with guanine. When initially memorizing the structures, I anchor everything to thymine in this way. Thymine has another little quirk, and that is that it has a methyl group, and I remember that thymine is the one with the methyl group because methyl has a TH in it and thymine is the only nucleobase with a TH in it. Now that we've drawn all these features into thymine and echoed them above, above and to the left in guanine and cytosine, we need to note that thymine only has one double bond here and that this nitrogen needs three things bound to it so it must get an H. Next, we think about hydrogen bonding. So thymine needs to hydrogen bond to adenine, and cytosine hydrogen bonds to guanine. So let's look at the hydrogen bond acceptor donor pattern. For thymine, we have a hydrogen bond acceptor on oxygen and a hydrogen bond donor in this NH. Adenine needs to have the opposite. It needs to have a hydrogen bond acceptor on this nitrogen and a hydrogen bond donor in this position. So to accomplish that, nitrogen is not going to have an H on it, but the top part of the ring 
needs to have an NH2, a hydrogen bond donor. Likewise, guanine has a hydrogen bond acceptor here, and so cytosine also needs to have a hydrogen bond donor in NH2. So if we look at this pattern, adenine and cytosine both share an NH2 on top to create hydrogen donor complements to the carbonyls that are shared between guanine and thymine. Since we're looking at adenine, all we need to do to fill adenine in is to remember is that it has four double bonds, and so to complete its structure, we just need to add two more double bonds, and the adenine base is now complete. So what about C and G? Well, let's look at the double bond rule in C. Since C needs to have two double bonds, the only place to put one is right here, and that forces this nitrogen to be a hydrogen bond acceptor. If this position is a hydrogen bond acceptor, this position needs to be a hydrogen bond donor. So we need an H here. Guanine needs to have three double bonds, so the only place left to put a double bond is right there. And since cytosine and guanine form three double bonds, here we have a hydrogen bond acceptor. Here we have to have a hydrogen bond donor. And so that's it. So a few basic rules about how the pyrimidines and purines are constructed, combined with these three rules here and some facts about thymine, helped us construct this image of the four nucleobases. Now from here, what I recommend doing is drawing pictures of each of these nucleobases on a flashcard with the letter on the other side. And what I would do is shuffle them, pull one out, and based on the structure in front of you, try to draw the nucleobase that it pairs with. So if you pull thymine from your card, try to draw adenine by first drawing a purine skeleton, fill in the complementary hydrogen bonding pattern, and then fill in the double bonds based on the 4-3-2-1 rule. Likewise, if you draw thymine, then try to draw the other pyrimidine by remembering the ways that the two relate. They share this carbonyl in the lower region of the structure. The ones in the two columns have an opposite hydrogen bond donor acceptor pattern, and then the rest can be filled in based on the 4-3-2-1 rule. I suggest doing this over and over a few times. Pull a card, try to draw the base it pairs with, and try to draw its partner purine or pyrimidine. Repeating this over and over again, in just a few times, you'll start to develop a feeling for the personality of each of these nucleobases. And after a little bit of practice, you'll just know the four bases cold, and you can use these rules to just double-check that you've drawn them correctly. I hope this helps you, and good luck studying.